For those of you, as Jackie said, don't know me, my name's Andrew Hewitt. I'm Assistant Secretary of what we call VARPA. Uh, we represent health professionals in Victoria, which includes people like physiotherapists, radiographers, myself, sonographers, um, occupational therapists. So kind of pretty much the forgotten workforce in hospitals. You, you hear politicians talk about um, doctors and nurses, and no disrespect to the doctors and nurses, but there's a whole other army of workers that make the health system work. And that includes um, the health professionals and obviously all the um, support services. We represent sort of the, uh, the health professionals. Uh, this is really um, rewarding seeing up here tonight, and uh, we've pretty much covered the whole spectrum. We've got um, Troy at one end, who's got you know endless experience and, and a union that's been going on forever. Um, we've got Mike up here, who's demonstrated you know um, just over a decade of building a union. Um, uh, we've got Siobhan here, who's starting from scratch. And we've got us, who's got a me, who's got a union, who's got a really checkered and um, uh, dark recent history. Yeah. Um, and if you don't know what I mean by that, um, just just Google Kathy Jackson <laughs> and watch the papers this week because she goes back to court on Tuesday. And that's the criminal trial um, for her. Sorry. The guy, oh, her partner, Michael Lola. No, I don't even want to go there. But um, <laughs> Kathy Jackson, for those who don't know, who was she was the state secretary of our, our branch of the union. Um, she was, I, she, I considered her um, a friend or colleague. Uh, I was one of her supporters for a long period of time, and had the wool pulled over my eyes. I had no idea what was going on. So, the the short version of a very long story. And what you don't want to do is give a unionist a microphone, as you probably gathered, because <laughs> um, we'll, we'll go down a rabbit hole and we'll keep you here forever. But what happened was. Um, uh, 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 we, and then for those of you who aren't across the whole of the politics of it, um, again, you can Google Craig Thompson, uh, prostitutes and credit cards. And as a result of all that, um, Kathy Jackson, the spotlight turned on her and lo and behold, um, she had her hands dirty as well. But we didn't know this at the time. And what happened was in 2012, um, the, our branch of the union was in, was in, the, um, was in the, the poo, for want of a, a better term, uh, of, the federal government stepped in and appointed an administrator and threw out all of the officers. And that kind of opened the door for some change. And uh, another radiographer from a hospital in, in uh, Melbourne uh, contacted me. I didn't know him for a bar of soap, but someone, uh, uh, a colleague, put us together. Um, ironically, the same person who introduced, introduced, introduced me to my current wife, so I probably should have taken cue from that, that there was going to be a long and troubled relationship growing out of this, but I won't go there. Um, Anyway, so we got together um, and we built a team. And what we were doing, we were taking on um, an incumbent uh, um, union uh, group. And, and as, as Siobhan's um, commented on about the ties with um, the establishment in, in the political establishment, particularly ALP, um, this has been pretty much the bane of our problem all along. There was um, deep, dark politics and connections that have gone back for a long period of time back to when all these people were in um, university together, um, some very grubby, dim, dark past. And there was a lot of entitlement that, that grew out of that. And as a result, um, there was a lot of our money, a lot of the members' money, and I was one of the members being spent inappropriately and being channeled in the wrong directions. Um, but we took this on, and we, we, we cobbled together a team, and we thought, oh, this is never going to work, but we'll give it a shot. And, and we pulled it off. And how did we do that? We had a really, a really hard-fought ground... Uh, ground fighting uh, grassroots campaign. We, we, we tried to play smart. We didn't have a lot of money behind us. We, we weren't taking any money from any, any political parties. We got a little bit of help from, from some friends. We did some fundraising. And we, we got out there and we knocked on doors. We went to, to the hospitals. We met with uh, members. And, and we, uh, we put stickers on. And, and this is part of the Code Blue campaign. Um, we had uh, little stickers everywhere. So th this... As Jackie was saying about our um, EBA campaign, we had um, five foot, nearly six foot blow up dinosaurs for our campaign. Now, put that onto your um, protect act, protected action ballot um, application to Fair Work, um, blow up um, toys, and you get some really interesting phone calls saying, what the are you doing? But it, we put them on there, and they became part of the industrial action, and, and as Jackie said, they were in the hospitals. And it, um, so we, we run a, a camp that was the subsequent campaign, but our original campaign to actually take back the union was all about um, 
playing it smart and, and getting out there and having the conversation. And it's all about actually um, winning winning the trust and, and building that um, that reassurance that we were there for the right purpose. And we were there for the right purpose. And that's what our, our union's been about. It's about being um, there for the membership. And we've been open and forthright. Um, all of our financials go on the website so that uh, members can see where we're spending money. Um, everything, we're, we're totally accountable. Any money that comes in, we put back towards um, servicing the members. We, we're um, scrupulous in terms, in fact, we've probably, I mean, um, and, and Troy would know this, um, coming out of all the changes that have come through in, in, the, in the recent um, years in terms of the governance procedures, they use the HSU, which is our union, as, as, the, as the test case for why we're doing this. And so we've had to go the extra miles to actually uh, to, to recoup that ground. Um, so I've got a whole bunch of notes here that I, that I wanted to, to get to, but what we're facing now is a result of all these this, 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 um, uh, these corruption and, and this um, misappropriation is that the government's turned around and they're using this against us. We saw in to, um, through the whole uh, Work Choices campaigns back in 2007 that they, the government, the Tories made, the, made a mistake, they attacked the workers. This time they've, they've, they've come back smarter and they're attacking the unions themselves. They're attacking the, the, the union leaders. They're introducing these, these ridiculous rules that are going to make it near impossible for us to, to do our job. And we're a very small branch. We've got uh, about 4,500 members. Uh, we don't have the resources of a, of a, a big militant uh, union like the ETU. Um, but what, so what this means is that they could easily, easily find us out of existence. And so and they've got these uh, right-wing um, media who are selling this as being um, equitable, just trying to bring the laws in line with the corporations. But what it's really doing, it's, it's, it's the ABCC... Uh, in disguise, basically, and and they're getting away with it by applying it across all of the unions. And what we what people don't realise is that they, it's basically they try and chop off the head. And so they try and take away the union leadership, so that the um, the workers will have nobody to turn back to. They'll have no one there to support them. So what we've got to do is we've we've got to we've got to get out there and we've got to educate our members. And a large part of what we've done in our branch, and we've been very successful. We started off pretty much from nothing. When the administrator, we took over from the, uh, the administrator, we had a couple hundred thousand dollars, no infrastructure, nothing at all. Um, we had to we had to recruit a whole team around us and um, find officers, lease officers, and we've gone from two and a half thousand members to four and a half thousand members in four years. So that's sixty percent growth in a union in four years. That's on the back of all of the bad media that we get on the, on the basis of what's been going on with the corruption. So we've had to overcome that as it's going along. So, so it can be done. We've demonstrated it can be done. So we've, we've got to a point now that we feel we've, we've got the, um, the confidence from our members. So we're starting now trying to educate them. We're trying to educate them on social justice. And, it was, and I was really pleased to hear um, Siobhan said that you know, they're basically, basically um, the basic tenants are membership-led, um, democratic, uh, and and class thanks Jackie and class uh, looking at the class struggle we we add to that social justice and we've actually got like a s sequence of T-shirts now printed up that we give to our delegates and to our members and it's got messages on it um, you know we've got uh, ones about marriage equality we've got ones about um, in, in indigenous rights so we're, we're trying to branch out beyond the the, the basic. Uh, function of a union that, as, as our members see it, which is to represent them in the workplace. And what people don't realise is that the unions are pretty much the last um, truly democratic uh, organisations that stand between the Tories and, and you know, the, we're representing the working class. And so we're, we're, we're the barrier that's, that's there to protect them. And so we've got, to, we've got to educate them that if without us, they're, really, they're pretty much screwed. And so... I see it as, as, as part of my role as a union official is not just to go into a workplace and, and make sure they're getting uh, paid appropriately, make sure that they've got um, good, good agreements, um, but to go in there and educate them. You know, things like climate change, I mean, if, if, if there's no planet, there's no jobs. So from, for us, it's, it's, it's a much broader, broader issue, but we can't do our jobs if, if the government's, as I said, chopping the head off. So we've got, to, we've got to start at the bottom and work our way up in terms of, you know, every campaign's got to start somewhere. Um, I, I think you know Troy's got some some great ideas there, but we've you know it's got to be there's got to be solidarity, there's got to be unity, um, and we can't rely on um, people like the ACTU. I mean, 
when when the Register Organisation Act went th went through Parliament, where were the ads? I mean, the CFMEU ran some ads um, about the ABCC at the time, but you know, where were those old ads? We, we remember Tracy during the work the uh, work choice campaign with a with a kid on her hip talking to her boss saying, "Oh, you know, I can't get to work or whatever." Where, where was she saying, "Oh, my husband hasn't been home for three days because you went to work and they've locked him up and he hasn't got any representation." Where the hell is that? You know, that's the sort of shit that they should be putting out there to, to actually get the message out. This is what's going on. So, look, um, as I said, I had, had lots to get through here, but I think uh, hopefully I've, I've given you some of a snapshot of what, what we've been through and hopefully where we're trying to go. And, and, and it's heartening to see people that are like yourselves that are, that are sharing the fight. And, um, uh, and hopefully, you know, at the end of the day, we can get there because if we don't, um, it's, it's going to be it's pretty ugly. I'll just finish with one little note. I, I had a, um, an academic talk to me last week and she said um, she's going to Singapore helping setting up a course for professionals in Singapore. And she said to me, they've asked me, you know, what does the future hold? And I said, well, that's a really tough question. It, it de <laughs> depends if you're a glass half full or a glass half empty person. And, and I, said, um, I said, look, regardless, regardless of what the future holds, I said, we don't want one that's forced upon us. We want one that we help shape. And if, you can, if we can do that, if we can be part of that, then, then you know, we've succeeded.